Good morning, everybody. It's Kate Richberg, and it is time for Free Tip Friday here on Beanshop.com. Um, <clears throat> happy Friday, everybody. I'm here with my tiny coffee because we've got a lot to do today. So uh, a little uh, Italian espresso never hurt anyone. So cheers to you. Hello to everyone. Janice is over moderating on our YouTube channel with our guests over there. And our friend Gita is moderating from across the miles on our Facebook page uh, over on in the Facebook world. So a big hello and a welcome to all of you guys. We're broadcasting in a bunch of different places today, uh, including the Great Beat Extravaganza, which I have... <clears throat> coming up soon. Sorry, I haven't been talking a lot today, so my voice is a little rusty. Um, but we've got some fun stuff coming up in the great bead extravaganza. So make sure and um, jump over to the great bead extravaganza Facebook group and join that group over there. Um, <clears throat> on February 17th, sorry, February 18th, which is the preview, the 19th and the 20th is going to be the Great Beat Extravaganza weekend. And I have a, a kit, a bead shop kit right there that I think you guys are going to love. I'm working on it now and I'm going to debut it soon so you guys can see it. It's going to be uh, for sale um, a little bit before the event. So uh, we're going to... Um, give you guys some more heads up on that. But uh, so that's coming up with me and <clears throat> a whole bunch of our friends over there at the TGBE. So there's a lot going on over there. So jump on over and um, and uh, see, uh, you know, join the group. We'd love to have you over there. Um, the kit will be sold on beadshop.com. And I think you're going to love it. I'm bringing back an oldie but goody. I can't wait. I just can't wait. But anyway, enough about that. <clears throat> Let's get to what we're doing today. A little more coffee, I think. It's great to see everybody from all over the world. Um, Priscilla is saying hello from Holland. Hello, Priscilla. Thank you for joining us there. And <clears throat> we've got our friends from all over. Um, Thank you, you guys, for all the kind compliments and kind words. I'm wearing a little bit of a fancy sweater. I thought I'd throw on a brooch and there's some applique on here. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm I'm blinging out with the jewelry today. That's for sure. Um, it's going to be a cold weekend <clears throat> around the U.S. this weekend. Uh, for those of you who follow American football, uh, it's the, the last big playoff weekend. So Chris and I are going to be tucking in, cheering on those San Francisco 49ers, though. I don't know if they have a chance against Green Bay, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. That's a little bit of American football chat for those of you in the U.S. So uh, anyway, and then thank God, just the Super Bowl and then football's over. But then baseball season starts and my beloved San Francisco Giants. But anyway, enough sport uh, talk. I know our Gita is an avid follower of her sport, uh, her Denmark, her her uh, football uh, team or soccer, as we say here in the US. So um, I don't know, sports kind of fun. And of course, uh, the Olympics are coming up. And you know, my favorite sport, the Tour de France coming up this summer. Anyway, Let's get to the beats. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. Vicky's all, go Chiefs. But what about some beads? I know. Okay. I'm getting there. Thank you for hanging in there with me. Um, so I've got a whole bunch of beads that we're going to debut. This is how things are going to work. Um, it is 1038 here uh, on the uh, West Coast Pacific time. The trunk show, I'm going to do a preview now. The trunk show is going to go live at 12 noon today, Friday, January 21st, and it'll go until it's sold out, right? 
There are limited amounts here of everything, but don't worry. I'm going to do another probably African bead trade show sometime in March or April. So if you miss this or if you miss out on what you love, don't worry. There's more in the pipeline. Um, the reason I do these shows like this and we don't just put them up for kind of, you know, stock is that the quantities, as you know, COVID has screwed with supply chain everywhere especially in the bead world. Um, I get to meet up with one of our African bead sellers. He's from Ghana. He's someone that Janice and I have known for uh, 30 years now. Um, and he comes from a long line of African bead sellers. Um, and he is a very good friend of ours. So, um, so he's really trustworthy and we love him and we love buying from him. So, um, so he has limited quantities of things. So when I see it, I'm like, oh, great, I'll take it. And we don't really have enough to put it up on the website to sell through. They're just those limited quantities. So these kind of quote unquote trunk shows um, are kind of the way that we do it. So um, anyway, um, so that's kind of why I'm doing it this way. So don't worry, you're gonna see more of these wonderful African uh, beads uh, coming down the pike. Um, and this is what I've got today. So that's a little bit of the background. So uh, as I said, they're going to go live at noon. So what I would do is if you're new to shopping with us on bead shop, you may want to jump on bead shop, create a, um, create a um, account, a profile, whatever. So you're ready to go. All of your info is in there. Because just because you have something that's in your cart doesn't mean it's yours. You have to proceed through the checkout process, okay, um, to, in order for it and get a confirmation number that your order has gone through. Um, also, if you're going to shop other stuff on Bead Shop, and let me put my little, um, I'll put the beadshop.com logo up for now, the website URL up for now. Um, if you're going to shop for other things, I would, we're going to end this show at about 1030. So there'll be about a half hour in between the show ending and the trunk show beginning. So you can put stuff in your cart, then jump over to the, um, the, the trunk show and it'll go live. There'll be a link. There was a link in your newsletters this morning. If you go over there now, it's not going to populate. So you have to make sure and refresh that page because they'll all come up. Okay. Um, so shop, 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 and then go check out. Okay. Don't dilly dally and go, Oh, I want some leather too, or I want this, or I want that. Get in, get out, get done. Okay. That's my advice to you. Um, and thank you so much for your support for these kind of events. I know it's kind of exciting and I don't want people to be disappointed, but I also want to bring you, um, really unique and interesting beads. So that's how we're going to do it. Um, I am going to talk about the stuff here, the trunk show stuff first, because I know you're super excited about it. Then I'm going to show you a few things from our stock that might go nicely with them. I'm going to show you um, the leather that I would use with them. And someone asked about my earrings. I'll talk to you about those at the very end. So thank you for noticing. Okay, so let's jump in. Let me add in my, my top camera and let's take a look. Okay, so uh, let me do this. There we go. Um, yeah, Kita says, hit it, Kate. All right, here we go. Let me talk to you about these guys first, and I'm going to measure them out so you can see them. Um, I found these two in his giant stash. I shouldn't put the photo up. I, I shopped this uh, actually in the driveway of my house in Fresno, and my neighbors were like, what's going on here? So it was pretty cool. It was a lot of fun. So um, in the treasure trove that is my buddy's van, I found these guys, which I love. They are brass centerpieces and I'll measure them for you. Um, 53 millimeters and this one, including the bale on the top is a little bit larger, 68 millimeters. Um, they're brass. They're uh, not super heavy, but they'll make really, really great centerpieces. Okay. So we've got these to start off. I've also got some loose beads. So let me put those over here. <laughs> I decided to sell these guys loose. These are a, what are we calling them? We're calling these feather 
beads. Okay, and so the colors that we've got here, this is lilac, and it's kind of hard to see. They're really a they look kind of gray on the screen, but they're really kind of a purpley, they're a purpley gray. So we've got lilac, we've got um we've got celadon. Let me get those. This color is like a dream. We've got um, petal. We've got lagoon. I bought a lot of these, didn't I? But I just couldn't help it. I loved them so much. <clears throat> we have, I think this one is marina that's coming out. I should have done these more in a little bit of a color order. And this last one is burnt orange. Okay, let me get this over. Oops, my camera kind of bent a little bit. So here we go. Let me arrange them in a color, kind of a color ombre kind of rainbow thing. I don't know. I just want to have the excuse to touch them, I guess. And then I'll measure them and stuff. I'll tell you guys the, <clears throat> the whole sizes and stuff. There we go. I think that looks real pretty. So real nice, as I like to say. So uh, there we go. Nice. So the Celadon, it's coming on the screen a little more mint and a little less blue than it is i think maybe so uh let me measure <clears throat> this guy is and they're all slightly different in size but about 26 almost 27 millimeters by about 12 and a half this whole size is about two and a half millimeters okay so the way that these beads are made, these are individually lamp worked. They're made individual glass beads. And what they do is <clears throat> to get this feathering, they wind the glass and shape it. And then they use what's called a stringer, which is a long skinny piece of glass. In this case, it's yellow and white. You can see that there. And they wrap that glass. All of this is molten. They wrap the glass around. Then they use like a, a steel they call it a rake, but it's a little steel pick, and they feather the bead across this way, like this. So that's that's how it's made. So these are all handmade beautiful beads. This marina is kind of a, it's it looks almost black again on the screen, but it's, I wonder if I put it on the white, will it give me a better color? Maybe you can see that a little bit better, but it's a nice kind of a teal, dark teal color. Then this one here, this um, marina is just a nice happy blue. Then we've got that lilac. Here's the burnt orange and here's the petal. So really a beautiful bead. And we have, so I'll show you these. I brought these over. <clears throat> these are our jumbo current beads that we uh, carry and we have them in stock now. And I think that these loose beads would be fun to use with some of these jumbo currants. And we still have some of these um, lost wax pieces. Remember the piece that I was wearing on Wednesday, right? It had some of these beads in, right? So you could string some of these up um, in kind of some multicolor colorways. They'd be really pretty with those. Okay, so also I wanted to show you guys, <clears throat> and I'll show you these beads especially. This, these have a two and a half millimeter hole. Okay, so I've got some 1.5 millimeter um, leather here. This is our iris blue leather. And so I've made a knot. I did that so fast. I'm going to do it again so you can see it. Um, but if you knot like this, okay. Um, and the question was, Donna asked, are they opaque or transparent? They are opaque. They're kind of a saturated, kind of milky color, which is kind of cool. <clears throat> so that 1.5 millimeter, 
leather cord. Can you see how that fits in there like this? That doubled up knot, I tie a loop, then I go through once, and then I go through twice, right? If I want a little bit of my leather to show, I don't have to pull this knot tight up against the bead. So maybe I'll leave just a little bit of room so I've got some movement there, just a little bit. That way you don't have to be right on either, right? So I'll <clears throat> string another one on. So something like this is pretty easily achievable with just your leather cord, right? Go through, go through once, go through twice, and let that loop fall into that little figure eight. You've seen me do this before. It's my kind of standard leather knot. Walk it down so it's in place there. Tighten it up just a little bit more here. And then I'll tighten it up. Okay, so see there, really pretty, and it's all um, uh, kind of a monochromatic. It is. Someone's asking about is it the same as a barrel knot? You know, my buddy Kelly from Kelly's Bead Boutique, she does that barrel knot. It's similar, but it's just two loops through. Okay, so this is like my old standby. Um, leather knot that I've been doing forever and ever and ever. So it's just a double, I call it a double overhand. This is an overhand knot here, a single. And then you can go double here like this. And so that's my standard when I'm knotting leather, you know, instead of knotting, doing a pearl knotted necklace, I would do a leather knotted necklace. Look at how pretty that giant, giant uh, current it's not that giant, but let me measure this one for you. These are about 18 and a half, 18 millimeters, okay, like this. <clears throat> and then you can use that same, let me see if I can get this through here because it's hollow. That's always a little bit of a challenge. There we go. But see, with these beads that have such large holes like these, these African beads, we go through once like this, just get that loop, go through twice, and that makes that knot look nice and fat so the bead doesn't jump over it, okay? Kind of let it go into that figure eight and tighten it down. <clears throat> then you're able to just string along, right? Look at how cool that looks already. Now you could also, with these pendants, let me just make sure this one fits on just fine. Look at that look. I'm going to take that home, right? Um, or this bead right here. Let me do this other one. And this is the 1.5 millimeter. It's my go-to. I think one millimeter will work. Might be a little bit thin. Whoops, bead down. Stay there. Um, and the two might be a little bit heavy, but you can try it. Okay. So there it is. Okay. So both of those work really, really beautiful. Okay. Beautifully. So here are these. So here, these are the feather beads. Okay. So let me put these back in their bags because these are earmarked to go out. I would like to take them with me, <laughs> but they have to go out to you guys. I just love them. There go the lilac. Here's the celadon. Really pretty. <clears throat> the marina the petal the petal and the burnt orange i really love that look together aren't those pretty really lovely these guys i like this orange color kind of has that terracotta feel to it like this right um so there's that and here's the petal all right so these guys You've seen these. I know I need to take the two off the leather. I will do that. Just not, just not yet. Okay, let me get those out of there. Okay. So, and someone's asking, are the beads heavy? Audrey's asking those that. You know, they're glass, so they're not light, but they're not 
you know, like the Wilma Flintstone necklace beads, right? So that's why I think mixing up these heavier glass beads, stringing them with some space in between them and stuff will really kind of lighten the load. Also, if you're making a necklace with pieces like this, make it a little shorter so it hugs your neck so it doesn't um, drag your neck down. Um, I think it looks, uh, I think that's a good way to go with it. Okay, sorry, I had to drink another cup of coffee. I know you guys can really hear that when I drink, but I've got to do it. Let's go to the gooseberry beads, shall we? These are some favorites, and I had these in my last trunk show and the colors are always a little <clears throat> different with what um with what they have so i got a nice let me move the camera up here and look at how i i try and shop when i do these shows i try and shop in themes so that things kind of go with each other so I think that this looks really beautiful. Look at that that I just strung up. Loves, uh, looks great with this. Um, look at this yellow color. Oh my goodness. That beautiful. And then I got one more. Here we go. This blue. And so these are um, the gooseberry beads in sunshine this one that yellow lagoon celadon this green and this is a gray it's not showing up if i pulled it up close we're calling it seal all right these are transparent i don't see these transparent that often these are a really special color i just love them so these are transparent these are all opaque okay let me get them up close to the screen. These guys are here, okay? And so these beads are, hmm, I'll tell you the length of them. I haven't even cut them off the hank yet, but you'll get a full strand like this. And the this is about a 24 inch strand, about, okay? The beads are going to vary a little bit. See how the size varies just a little bit here? But let me just grab one and I'm going to measure it. This is about a seven millimeter by about almost an eight millimeter. And the whole inner diameter. Let me see if I can get that in there. There we go. Is just probably a little over two. Okay. So that's these. These are gooseberry beads by the strand. And you can see how that, that teal feather bead is a very similar color to this blue. Um, this celadon one, similar, little, little different. But they all go really nicely together. Here's up close of that seal which I think looks really beautiful. And I think this just goes really beautifully with those brass pendants. Okay, really nice. So um, so that's these guys, okay? So put these back, <coughs> pardon me. Your favorites and mine, what we call currents. We call them currents because it's glass that has like been tossed by time and tide, right? So that's our bead shop name for them. I just love them. When I bought the green tanks and the blue hanks, I thought that the greens and the blues were all the same color in the hang. And I discovered when I examined them a little closer that half were darker and half were lighter. So we made two different listings. Okay, and I'm gonna tell you the difference. 
between them. Okay, can you just, I can't take it. I just, I can't take it. I love these so much. So let's talk about the blues first. Can you see the difference between these blues and these greens, right? A little darker, a little lighter, okay? The darker of the blue, we're calling this one ice blue, the light one. The darker one we're calling cornflower, okay? All of these are about the same size. The purple ones are just a little bit smaller. Let me measure this for you. I don't know, about 14 millimeter by about almost 15 there. This is a little bit of a smaller one. That's about 12 by about almost 14. Okay. The whole size, <clears throat> the whole size is pretty big in these. Can you see that? Almost four millimeters, right? This one here, again, almost four, probably about four millimeter. This one is a little bit smaller, almost three. So they um, they vary in size, okay? And so the trunk show will start on beadshop.com. These will all go live at noon Pacific time, okay? And you'll see, I'll show you this the page it's beadshop.com collections flash sale friday um is where they are though it'll also be up on our home page okay and as gita says remember to reload that page if you've looked at the page and they're not showing you have to reload it okay because they'll go live at noon they're scheduled so um they'll go up automatically so these are the two greens so the darker green we're calling bottle green. And this lighter green, you can see the difference. This lighter green we're calling sea green. Okay. So there's the two lighter and here are the two darker. Okay. <clears throat> These, I can't take it. I love them so much. And when I can find this orange, this one is called... Uh, pumpkin and these are these are pretty irregular okay and some of the glass is pretty irregular in my opinion does not make them any less beautiful I think it actually makes them a lot more interesting but see how they really are like a a tangerine color see this one it's fused together but it's just it has that that inclusion in it okay so let me um measure one of these 12 and a half by i don't know 14 ish the whole sizes really vary here let me see if i can get this caliper in there about two and a half almost three millimeter okay yeah and these are opaque thank you gita for saying the rest of these are really fairly transparent these are opaque. They almost look like little oranges strung on this strand. And this is how they string them over in Africa. From These are from Ghana. Um, and it's on a cotton string. And that cotton string is then wound with straw up here at the top. Okay, so this is a traditional way that these are sold and have been sold this way for hundreds of years right? Yeah, it is. Kim was saying like the inside of butternut squash. It is really true. It is. I, we could call this butternut squash for sure too. It's beautiful. These purple have kind of this luminescence to them and they really feel super silky. The glass is a little bit different. You can see this blue is a little pity right here. This glass is super smooth, really silky to the touch. Um, these we're calling grape. And the size is just under 12, though they vary by a little over 12. And the hole is a nice big regular hole. Hole's a little bit larger in these. Four millimeter. You see that? Sorry, there's a little bit of glare on there. 
I, I'm in love with these. I love them, love them, love them. So you can see again how these would go. And these feather beads would look beautiful interspersed throughout these pieces. Okay. Next, we're not done yet, my darling darlings. This will be the last section collection I give you. These, I've got some super special beads, beads that I have not seen. I haven't seen this in a long time, which I'm very excited to bring them to you. I have these. Oh my goodness, I love them. And these are all handmade. Yeah, all of the currants, the ones I showed you, those were all handmade. <clears throat> all of these beads have been made individually by, by hand. I've got these guys. And so, yeah, the trunk show goes live at noon Pacific time. So that's 3 p.m. Eastern time. Today, if you're watching this live, January 21st at on 2022. Crazy. Okay, so let me show you first these guys here. These are old, 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 old Venetian trade ovals. So this, when I unearthed these in the back of my buddy's van, I was like, wait a minute, how, you know, what's going on here with these? Um, these are, you get about 22 inches worth of beads. These are um, classic. I have some of these in red. I have some of these in blue and I have a few in white. I don't see them very often. Sometimes you see them called milky white. Um, these come through Nigeria um, from the trade um, and they're just, it's an exquisite bead and it feels really cool to the touch, very silky. Um, they do have, you know, some pits and things because they are, they're old. Um, and this, as I said, gives you about 22 inches. Let me measure these. This barrel, this is a little over 16 and a half millimeters by about 12. And the hole, you can see the way that they strung them. It's on fishing line here. So the hole is probably a little under a millimeter. It's still a pretty big hole there, but we wouldn't be able to get them maybe on the 0.5 millimeter leather or on the um, Chinese knotting cord. You could get them in. And the prices, you guys, I'll be honest, I don't have them listed. They'll all be listed on the website. I don't want to tell you something that's incorrect. Okay, so they'll um, all be on the page. But let me tell you, uh, the I, we priced them well for you guys um, with the flash sale. I think that this, I don't know if any of you guys know Iris Apfel, right? Iris, she's, you see her, uh, she's an, an American treasure, really. She just turned 100 this year. She's kind of a fashion icon. She wears just a ton of jewelry, right? She wears really beautiful, big necklaces. This would be an Iris necklace right here. Look at how beautiful that would be. Maybe I'd switch those out, put those guys up there. And maybe I'd do two more of these up there. But these are just, I just, I can't get enough of these. I have always, I've been an African bead collector since my very, very early years uh, of working with beads. So uh, I have some that I've collected almost 40 years ago, which I love. Um, so these are real special. I really like them. But again, you'll see some of them have inclusions in them. They show uh, the wear of the years on them, right? Some are shinier, some are older, um, and or not older, but 
uh, matted. So you'll you'll see the you'll see the difference there. Okay, and again the sizes will will vary. So I've got these guys, super special. Um, might be my favorite beads of a lot. These here, these are Krobo beads. They look very similar to Sandcast beads here, but we they're called Krobo beads, also made in Ghana, also made in like, kind of like the Lampwork beads. I'm going to come down here. I really liked this color palette that he had with these. You can see they're glass. You can see that on the edge. And these are um, then just painted over, not painted, but glass is then applied when the bead is molten in these different designs. Okay. They're a little, some are a little rough, um, but I think that's what makes the beauty of these Krovo beads so um, distinctive. I, I love them. So they come, let me tell you, the length of the strand is about... 14, you're going to get, well, probably about 25 inches of beads here. And let me just measure one of them for you. That's about 20 millimeters, almost 22. Uh, about 11 and a half millimeter. And then the whole size is going to be get that caliper in there it's about two and a half maybe a little more almost three millimeters okay really uh very pretty and all of the bead colors are about the same on these strands okay again it would look great with these brass pieces i also pulled these We've got circles of brass, circles of copper, circles of what we call midnight, and I think we call these circles of silver, I guess. These are uh, kind of a tire-shaped bead. You can see that there. Let me just pull these out. Let me pull out these brass ones. These would go, this is from our bead shop stock. We have these, right? And these guys here would look great as spacers in something like this. They would also be great as spacers if you just want to string these guys up, add a little bit of metal, okay, to this. It would look great, okay? And you can see here it would go with the, the brass, okay? So, uh, again, if you check out our Tribal and Trade section on Bead Shop, we do carry um, a bunch of these different ones. These we call Tides Out. They're um, also little spacers. So things like this um, uh, would go really great with things with these guys here. Okay. So uh, Kathleen, I I think the sound on my end is okay. If you're having sound issues, you might want to jump out of the stream and jump back in. It might be on your end. Okay, so double check that. Uh, let me know if anyone else is having sound issues, but I think we're up and running. Okay, these are those, as I say, those tides out. These are new. They're not old. Um, really nice glass spacer they would look good and janice is saying and this is a great one if you and i'm not sure where they are with covid if they are um accepting visitors but um we go when we do our bead retreat um the picard bead museum uh john and ruth picard have been collecting beads for ever and ever, right? Um, they have been in the bead biz for, I don't know, 50 years, maybe more. They've written books on trade beads. So if you're ever there, um, that's a great resource for you um, to check out, okay? And so um, these metal spacers, these are called circles of copper, circles of brass, circles of silver, and I think we call these black brass antique one circles of midnight. So circles of plus the color, okay? Um, we also have our new Ashanti saucers, these sandcast ones. This was the banana I showed 
you these guys um, when we brought them out. But these spaced in between would be beautiful. This is the, as I said, the banana. Though Audrey is like, why didn't we name them lemon? Because we named the other ones, these green ones, we named them lime. So um, they're a really, it's a really great, great color combo right here. Okay. And these are nice. They're nice, have, have a nice kind of smooth feeling to them. Again, a fairly opaque bead. Uh, Size-wise on these, just so you know about these Ashanti saucers, they come in different, they um, vary in size for sure. But they're about a little over 13 and a half. And these guys here, thick, just under five millimeter. And these guys, they're about a, they're a pretty big hole over three and a half and these guys these saucers like any of these beads that are all handmade in ghana these are handmade in africa in the, in ghana um the colors always vary in batches right so if you're like oh my gosh i love these lime ones grab them because i don't know if i'll get this exact color i might get a different green but maybe not this green so i just wanted to let you know on that one uh last but not least i have these are called asara beads a s a r a asara and these are made individually lamp worked okay and it's like a big spacer. Can you see that? And um, they are going to be about 24 inches. And they're simply glass bead spacers. And they vary in size, right? So this delicious little blue one, thickness about a little over five millimeter by about, I can measure it there, about 11. This one is a little uh, thinner, four and a half by uh, 9.2, right? So yeah, it could be, you could call it a rondelle, you could call it a, a, a saucer, you could call it a roller bead, right? Um, they're really lovely. Some are matted, some are shiny, um, and they're all different colors of glass. And these have all been made individually wound, um, molten glass around, wound around a mandrel. Really interesting colors. Okay, and again, you could get some of the large current beads to go in there, right? These are our currents that are a little bit smaller in the rounds. These are ones we carry online regularly. They're not part of the trunk show, but you could mix some of those guys in there. These smaller currents run about 10 millimeter to about, about 10, that's about 10, 10 and a half. And the whole size is about two and a half millimeter. Yeah, Janice is saying they need a good wash. They are a little dusty from the bead release, probably, that was inside the holes. Um, but you could, before you unstring them, you can just run them right under your faucet and it'll rinse them out well. I have not washed them, but you certainly can because they're glass. Sometimes I just spray them with Windex because that's the perfect thing to clean glass. Okay, so there you have it. So this is kind of a fun grouping. of these here okay really really nice and again these are brass beads would go really really beautiful with those okay so i did promise so that's it so those will all go live 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 at um noon uh, Pacific time. Right now it's 11.18 a.m. here. So uh, a little, uh, about 40 minutes or so about there. 
Um, and yeah, this was everything I showed in the pictures that I posted. This is everything that uh, that I've got. Um, I don't think I missed anything. I've got my list right here. Um, though there was a question um, about um, the earrings that I'm wearing. These are um, earrings fabricated from my jewelry line. They're fabricated. They're not metal clay. Someone was asking if they're metal clay. Um, this is, I can't remember the style, the name of what I call these, but uh, it's just a little, one of my, I haven't been wearing earrings lately, you know, with masks in the pandemic. My earring uh, game has not been on point lately, but these guys are kind of fun. So, um, and they're light, they're fun to wear. So thank you, thank you for asking. So there you go, okay. Um, so you guys, that's that's it. So let me flash the, uh, the banners around here, beadshop.com, you can jump right over, shop right on, you'll see it right on the homepage, but it'll be the Flash Sale Friday. Again, um, refresh your page right? If you're trying to find it a little bit before then, and if it com comes to be noon and you don't see it, refresh it, okay? Um, if you miss out, if you watch this later, or if something sells out, or I'm sorry about that, I, I hate it that you don't get the beads that you love, but know that we're going to be doing one of these again, uh, probably in April, right? Specifically for the uh, African beads, because I love them so, so much. Um, and I love supporting um, our buddy that we've been buying from for uh, 40 years almost. Um, so um, so we'll have some more, um, uh, another show coming up. Um, so, you know, sorry, I wish I had an infinite amount of these beads to, to sell you guys. Also, uh, you can find all of the info um, about Bead Shop. If you're new to watching us or if you're like, where can I get kind of the most updated information? Uh, jump over to our Instagram and follow us at beadshop.com. Um, you will see um, little sneak peeks of things. Drea does a great job over there kind of showing you what's happening sometimes behind the scenes. You can go and join us on our Facebook group, The Bead Table, and uh, answer. You guys, make sure and answer. There's four questions you have to answer. If you don't answer the questions over there, I can't let you in. So make sure that each of the four questions you answer. Okay, but we would love to have you over there in our group. And of course, if you're watching on um, YouTube, hit that like and subscribe button, whether you're watching us live on our YouTube channel for beadshop.com or you found us through the great bead extravaganza, jump on over and give us a follow. We'd love that. And of course, you can find all of the information on the project, though I did do a project today, and the products from today's broadcast right on our website. Our newsletter is the best way to keep in touch. So jump over there for the latest discounts, giveaways, and new products that we're debuting. Okay, let me just go over the um, comments if there's any questions or anything like that. Okay, I think that's good. We're good. I'm really glad uh, you guys are enjoying it. Thank you so much. Um, and so next week, um, we've got a project coming up from Janice, which we're really excited to debut. Um, she's got a great piece that we're going to share with you. I also have some things coming up in February. You know, February is usually the time for the big gem show here in the States that happens in Arizona. And I was scheduled to go, but I'll be honest, with the Omicron variant, I was not overly keen on traveling. So I canceled. Um, I want to stay home and stay safe, but I am shopping virtually with a lot of my wonderful vendors who will be there. So we are going to be um, doing some great Tucson finds um, in February. We have a great flash sale coming, another flash sale Friday that's going to be all about gemstones, in particular garnet, which 
you guys are going to love that's going to come up before Valentine's Day. And of course, we've got the Great Beat Extravaganza Tucson edition coming up um, that third weekend in February. So stay tuned for more information about that. Okay, so you guys stay safe, hang in there, wear those masks when you're out, do as much as you can to stay safe and healthy. And I will see all you all from my home studio with Janice next Wednesday. We can't wait to see you. So jump on over. Thanks so much for your support of these Af this African Bead Flash Sale. We really, really appreciate your support because without you guys out there, we here couldn't be doing what we love. So we appreciate each and every one of you. Have a fantastic weekend, everybody. Go 49ers and I'll see you next week. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.